Hi everyone! Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own slider pop-up card using the Heffy Doodle slider pop-up dies. We've also got the slimline slider pop-up dies so you can create your very own slimline sized slider pop-up card. It's got exactly the same pieces just in the different size so you can use an A2 card or you can use a slimline. Here's a slider card that Leslie's made earlier with these super cute jungle animals. These cards are great to add other fun features to, like this piece of acetate here to make it look like our parrot from Wingman is really flying. So this is your A2 and your slimline pop-up side by side, but we also have a range of other dies that work really well with both of these two sets. Here I've grabbed the slimline pull tab die set. This set matches both your A2 and your slimline slider pop-up dies and I'm going to be using some of the pieces to make my card today. So why don't we get crafty? First of all I'm going to stamp out all of my images that I'm using in today's project. Here is the amazing llama stamp set. It has these super cute super fluffy llamas or alpacas and some wonderful accessories for them. So I'm using my Misty to help me uh, position these on my alcohol marker friendly cardstock and I'm using Memento Tuxedo Blank ink to make sure these lines are really bold and solid. Now I'm going to stamp these a couple of times just to make sure the lines are solid and everyone looks super neat and super cute. Don't forget, a really simple way to clean your stamps off when you're busy crafting is just by using a baby wipe like I've done here. Now the fun part, colouring everything in. Today I'm using a combination of Spectrum Noir tri-blend markers and some good old Copic markers. I really like playing with both types of marker for some different looks and their different colour ranges. I'm using a combination of random semi-circular dashes and circular motions to colour in my llamas because I want them to look super cute and fluffy. I've stuck with natural and neutral looking tones for these llamas, but you can do whatever you like. Pastel, rainbow, the choice is up to you. Now for a pop of colour, I'm using some brighter blues, greens, yellows and reds to colour in the banners that are going to go at the top of my card. I've also used these same colours to do the accents on the suitcase and the signposts. To die cut these, I'm going to use my Heffy Doodle Memo Tape to hold the dies and my alcohol marker friendly cardstock to the A plates and then I'm running everything through the Heffy Doodle mini die cutting machine. I've got this cute little dish set to one side so that I can pop my die cuts in it so none of them go rogue. Leave a comment if you've also been a victim of the craft room floor stealing your die cuts while you're working on a project. I love the Heffy Doodle Memo Tape because a little really does go a long way. This low tack tape doesn't leave any marks on your cardstock, doesn't rip any of your cardstock more importantly, and you can reuse it over a couple of die cuts so it lasts forever. The Lamazing Llama stamp set comes with two small arrows that you can stamp inside your signpost. So I'm using some Catherine Puller inks today to make them super colourful and match the Copic colours of my banners. I've got a piece of watercolour cardstock here that I'm going to use to create my background with the Arizona stencil and the Cloudy Skies stencil. It's really easy to build a scene with both of these two stencils and I'm going for a wonderful mountain top for my lovely llamas. I'm using a couple different tools here because I want the front of my card to match the card base underneath when you pull the slider tab. So here I'm using the Waffle Flower Media Mat and the Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station to line up my stencils on this first panel so I can repeat the process on my card base. You don't have to have your card base match what's on the front of your card when you pull up your slider panel. This is just a personal choice for me for this project. You can really do whatever you'd like. I've trimmed down my piece of watercolour cardstock so it fits my die better. This is so I can get a better idea of how my stencil is going to look on my card. I'm then popping it on the Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station and lining up the bottom corner with the Waffle Flower Media Mat to make sure that I'm going to keep everything in line between this cardstock and my card base. 
I'm going to skip over these next couple of sections while I figure out my measurements um, because this is really personal preference. You can have the bottom section as high up as you like. You can have more clouds in the skies if you move everything further down. Um, this is just how I wanted my card to look. Once I was happy with the positioning of the different elements, I got to ink blending. I'm using four different Distress Oxides today. This is Wild Honey at the bottom panel here. I then used Squeeze Lemonade to do this sort of rocky mountain terrain. The geography nerd in me cannot for the life of me remember what the shapes of these jagged mountains are called. I think it might be buttes or mesas. Someone's going to have to correct me in the comments below. <laughs> And I've then used cracked pistachio for these more rounded mountain tops here. And finally, I've used salty ocean to add my cloudy skies. I wanted to challenge myself with this color palette and make a really bright, vibrant card because I sometimes think it's easy to accidentally choose less vibrant colors, or at least in my experience. I'm now creating my card blank using some white cardstock and the scoreboard here and I'm going to use this really cool hack to keep the backs of your cards super neat and clean, um, void of any rogue inky splatters. All you have to do is take a strip of memo tape and place it down the fold of your card in the centre of your card base and it'll keep the back panel nice and crisp and white. Um, but nobody's going to be looking at that side anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you skip this step because everyone else will be dazzled by the front of your card. I'm now going to use a little bit of movie magic to make my card blank match the front panel of my card. Essentially all I've done here is repeated the ink blending process using the marks um, I've made on my Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station using some memo tape to keep my lines uh, matched up. So now we're going to do some die cutting. Here is the front panel um, of the die set versus the front panel of my card. And this is it against the card base. So you can see what will be visible in that bottom flap area there versus what you'll see on the outside on my front panel. You're then going to grab this second die, this sort of rectangle that's missing its edge. And this is going to create your pull out section. But first, let's create the front panel of the card. I'm using the Gemini for this. Um, you'll need a larger die cutting machine to fit your A2 die through. I'm just popping it on the A plate with a little bit of memo tape in the corners to keep everything nice and secure. Here's another tip for your die cutting. If you pop your dies at an angle, it makes it easier for your die cutting machine, whether it's something larger like the Gemini or the Heffy Doodle Mini die cutting machine, it makes it easier for them to cut. So as you can see, the die cutting machine has cut out this front panel and put in some crease lines. This is what the card base will look like under my front panel when the bend is put in place. So now we're gonna create the pull out panel for your slider pop-up mechanism. I've got a piece of Ice Blast cardstock here from the Heffy Doodle cardstock range. And I'm going to use this thin rectangular die with the edge missing to die cut out this panel. It's important to make sure you keep this rectangular die nice and straight because it is quite thin. It can be easy for one of the legs to bend a bit of an angle. So just be careful when you're placing it down. Use some memo tape to keep everything nice and snug. You'll be left with this panel here, which you need to just snip with some scissors to free out your pull tab. You'll have to trim these shorter in just a second, so butt the edge of your scissor up against this piece of cardstock here to keep it nice and straight and just snip this end piece off. It's really easy to do, but just take your time and make sure that it is straight. You want this short edge to be at a 90 degree angle to this long edge. Next, we're gonna trim where you see these small notches using a paper trimmer because again, we want this to be super straight. So you can see there's notches on the left and on the right. So I've lined this up with the cutting line on the paper trimmer. And I've also made sure to butt this up against the edge so my paper is straight and will not move. 
So we've now got one card base, we have got my front panel and we have my slider pop-up panel all ready to go. I'm using the rounded edge of this pop-up panel at the top of my card, but you could use the more uh, sharp cornered edge at the top if you so wish. Now the die cutting machine already put in these crease lines for us, but we need to just emphasize these using a scoreboard to make sure the folding action works as it should. This is really easy to do, just pop your front panel on a scoreboard and use the tool to score down the lines already there for you. With the top and bottom creases on your card, you need to make sure you score these with the design facing up so the creases bend in the right direction. For the crease line in the middle, you'll want to flip your design round. I'm just making a wee notch here so that I can clearly see when I flip it over where I'm creasing and then just creasing again down the middle. So now we get to do some folding. Take this bottom panel or tab and fold it up towards the top of your card along your crease line. Using a scoring tool can help to create this really crisp line. Next, if you gently flip the panel all the way to the top, you can crease again along this top crease line. Then with this top panel flipped all the way up, you can just pull it back down along the middle and that will crease it along the middle line. And now you have your slider mechanism. We just need to attach the pull tab to give this some support. I just wanted to quickly check at this point that I like the look of the card base underneath my slider panel. Because I want some stamped image underneath the slider panel, I got to scene building before I stuck um, everything down in its assembled form. My adhesive of choice today was the Glubert Craft Glue. He is so cute, but just make sure if you're using wet adhesive that he's dry before you get cracking with your slider panels because you do not want glue where there shouldn't be glue. Otherwise your mechanism will not work as it should. It's really important to keep the bottom crease line and the top crease line clear of any stuck down critters because these sections need to bend so the mechanism works. If you want to overhang critters or elements in the centre, that's totally fine, but be sure to only apply glue to the lower half of these objects so they don't interfere with the crease line. I'm also using some Heffy Doodle foam strips to create some 3D elements on my card. This combined with the crease lines will create some really nice dimension. I've trimmed down this cactus image so I can place him where I want him and he won't interfere with this bottom crease line. With everything stuck into place on my card blank and this front panel, it's now time to move on to assembling the slider mechanism. First, I'm just taking a foam strip and attaching it to this bottom creased tab on the slider section on my card panel. I'm then taking the pull out panel and ice blast and attaching it there, making sure everything is nice and straight. Next up, I'm taking some Heffy Doodle 5mm foam tape and attaching that on the long sides of this card panel. This creates a nice little channel for the pull tab to sit in so he won't go wonky and it will keep your mechanism working well and as it should. You want to be really careful to get these nice and straight so your mechanism works as well as it should. As you can see, it's quite a snug fit. I've also gone ahead and added a small strip of 5mm foam tape at the bottom of the panel too. So you'll notice when you die cut out your front panel in the first place, you're left with this tiny little square that fits at the top of your pull tab. Now you can use this or you can take the pull tab section from the slimline pull tab dies, this little arrow piece here, and it fits that exact gap there. And that fits on both the slider pop-up die and the slimline slider pop-up die. So I'm taking some yellow cardstock, this is sunny side up, and I have die cut out this arrow um, tab and the tiny arrow insert too. I'm going to use just the outer tab for this and save that little arrow for a rainy day. 
So as you can see, it fits really, really well and adds just a little extra something to this section. I'm adhering this with a tape runner because I really don't want to chance this moving with wet glue before it dries. I'm also doing the same to secure this back section of the tab. I'm marking with a pencil the location of this pull tab section on my card blank because I want to do something a little bit extra. I've taken this rectangular shaped die from the slimline pull tab die and I'm just going to create a little cutout notch to make it easier for the recipient to access the pull tab. And now the moment we've all been waiting for today. Sticking that front panel with the pull tab slider mechanism down onto the card blank. I'm using the waffle flower media mat here to line up the bottom corners and the side edges on the right there because I want everything to line up super nicely. And there you have it. Here is our finished slider pop-up card. I love how this one's turned out. I love the colors. I think the llamas look super cute. And I hope I've shown you how easy it is to use this die set to create your own slider pop-up cards. And if you have the slimline slider pop-up dies, you can still follow the exact same steps I've shown you in this video to create a slimline slider pop-up card. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to the Heffy Doodle channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Why not check out some of these suggested videos for even more crafty inspiration? And until next time, happy crafting!